This is the new BMW 2 Series Active Tourer and it is proof that the demise of the MPV is greatly exaggerated. Yes, for most manufacturers, people carriers have pretty much been replaced by SUVs, which are more stylish and as a result, more popular. However, BMW plainly thinks there's life in the good old MPV yet, and I agree with them. And this all new version for 2022 aims to combine classic people mover practicality with the plushness and prestige that BMW is famous for. But is it any good? We'll find out over the next few minutes, but first there's something I'd like you to do. Yes, you got it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon on so that you catch all of our latest videos. Just click there, click there. Done it? Lovely. Of course, BMW being BMW don't call it an MPV, just like they call their SUVs SAVs instead of sports utility vehicle, it's a sports activity vehicle. And this is a SAT or SAT, a sports activity tourer. Now, look at it, high sides, boxy shape. It's an MPV in everyone else's books, isn't it? It's a pretty handsome looking thing nonetheless though. You've got these huge nostril-like kidney grills on the front that most new BMWs have these days and those tend to divide opinion, but elsewhere the lines are clean and the details are crisp. Let's move to the area of most importance for any MPV and that is the boot because practicality is very important for a vehicle like this. Now it's not game changingly big at 415 litres but it is a very usable shape, there's a wide opening and there's no load lip and all models come with a power tailgate. It's packing some classic MPV trickery too. You can free up a smidge more space by sliding the rear seats forward and the rear seats drop down in a versatile 40-20-40 configuration and the backrests sit fairly flush with the boot floor with no step and not too much of a slope. Now, it should be noted that BMW has not gone into full MPV mode with the Active Tourer. First of all, it's quite low compared with an MPV. Second of all, you'll notice there are only five seats and the Grand Tourer that did have seven seats has been discontinued. However, with that said, it's still very roomy in here with plenty of leg room and plenty of headroom. And this one's got an optional panoramic sunroof, which does eat into headroom a little bit, but I'm only five foot four and a half, so I don't really notice that. Like we said, you can slide the rear seats forwards and backwards and you can also recline them a bit if you fancy catching 40 winks. A fairly comfortable middle seat and narrow transmission tunnel with lots of foot space either side means it's also pretty good at carrying three across the rear bench. Jump in the front and if you're a tech fan, you're going to be in for a real treat. We've got a 10.25 inch instrument panel and a 10.7 inch infotainment screen. And it's all set in a beautiful curved dash. And this car has also been bestowed with the very latest iDrive system and only three BMWs have been bestowed with this new fancy excellent system. We've got the iX and the i4 and they both cost quite a lot more than the Active Tourer. The system very much majors on touchscreen functionality and unfortunately that does mean the loss of the rotary controller that made previous iDrive systems so wonderfully easy to use. Fear not though, as touchscreens go, this one is very easy to find your way around while the graphics are pin sharp and the screen is very quick to react to every swipe and prod of your finger. And yes, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come as standard along with navigation and DAB radio all built in. The other thing that'll dazzle you in here is the quality. The Active Tourer may be one of BMW's smaller, cheaper cars, but with posh materials that are solidly assembled and beautifully finished, it feels every bit as sophisticated as most of the company's bigger cars. Life is pretty good in many other ways because there is plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel and the seats are electrically adjustable, although that is quite an expensive option. And all round visibility is very good, as is storage. We've got big door bins here and we've got a bit of storage here. What are the chances? And just in front of that is the start button. So if I just pop my seatbelt on, we can go for a drive.
As is all the rage these days, there will be a couple of plug-in hybrids joining the range. But for now, it's a choice between two petrols and one diesel. Now, the 150 brake horsepower two litre diesel in the 218D probably won't be that popular. The bulk of the volume of purchases will be in the petrols. And they are fitted with a 48 volt mild hybrid system, which enhances performance and improves fuel efficiency. The 220i comes with a 1.5 litre three cylinder engine with 170 horsepower, while the 223i has a four cylinder two litre with 218 horsepower. It's the 223i that we're driving today and it performs really well. When you first put your foot down, there's a slight hesitation before the gearbox feeds in full power, which can be a little irritating. But once you get through that, the engine is strong and flexible and the gearbox is smooth and responsive. Smooth is a word that also applies to the engine, as is the word quiet, and that contributes to a very impressive level of overall refinement, making the Active Tourer a very serene way of getting round. And when you do put your foot down, it does sound pretty good. The rest of the driving experience very much depends on what you're expecting. Are you expecting a BMW or are you expecting an MPV? Let me explain that. This 2 Series Active Tourer is front wheel drive, contrary to BMW's tradition and history of being rear wheel drive. Now obviously that means you're not going to be getting that rear wheel drive poise and adjustability that BMW is famed for. But in an MPV, why would you want it? What it really needs to be able to do is offer enough compliance in the suspension to keep all of the occupants comfortable. And that is where the Active Tourer does really well. The ride is perhaps a shade firmer than some other people movers we could name, but there are few types of surface that catch the suspension out, especially on the more sophisticated dampers fitted to this M Sport trimmed car. So comfort levels are actually really impressive. While you're not going to confuse this car for a rear-wheel drive sports car, it is surprisingly enjoyable to thread through a set of winding country road bends. There's plenty of grip, there's not too much lean from that tall body, and the steering feels alert and well-weighted. And all of that points towards the car feeling light, controlled, pointy, and generally very agile. So have BMW lost their minds releasing a new MPV when other manufacturers are abandoning them? Well, no actually. Looked at on a purely objective basis, this is a really impressive all-rounder, particularly in the areas of practicality, quality and technology, and it also happens to be both comfortable and enjoyable to drive. It may not be as stylish as an SUV, but the fact that the BMW 2 Series Active Tourer even dares to be a little bit different actually makes it a little bit more appealing. What do you think of the BMW 2 Series Active Tourer? Are you a fan or would your money be going on an SUV? Let us know in the comments and remember to subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel and for your next car, head over to cargurus.co.uk for great deals from top rated dealers.